Recording's rolling. It is Friday, September 2nd. Uh, oh, a lot of you guys are turning in the homework page right now. Uh, remember on one side, there was a, all, all these questions that you could use the uh, kinematic formulas to solve. Um, that's that's uh, these three right here, these three amigos. And on um, the so we did most of these in class, and then I left a, a few scenarios for you guys for independent practice. And then on the opposite side were these conceptual questions, uh, which uh, we went over also. So turn in this page to the gray train, and I will get you guys some points there. The other uh, page that you guys have out uh, going to be due in a few days is this uh, half page take on quiz, so open notes take on quiz. So I gave this to you guys yesterday, so you guys got this right. Open notes take on quiz. Uh, we're about to go into a three-day weekend with Labor Day, so I will pick that up from you guys on Tuesday. Okay, you guys get the fuck? All right, so uh, I do want to get you guys started on projectile motion today. Uh, now, can't get super in-depth today because now you're going to have a seventh period today, but uh, we'll, we'll at least do one projectile type problem, uh, and then I'll, we'll go back and do an activity uh, with linear motion that involves uh, roller coasters, which will be fun. Hey, take a look at this right here. You guys see this cannon sitting on the edge of this cliff? Got a blast cannonball. Right. And it probably wouldn't be too hard to get the height of the cliff and see where the spot where the cannonball lands, right? You can measure that. Suppose it's like this many meters, this many meters. Hey, do you guys think that, like, do, do you guys sort of feel intuitively that there's enough information lying around there that you could calculate the blast speed of the cannon? Like how fast, how fast? I got a pair of questions, and that's the first question. It's like, how, how fast is the, is the last beat? So this is a projectile question. So we're just going to take kinematic motion and put it into two dimensions. So now, just instead of uh, like forwards, backwards, strictly, or like up and down, now we'll have kind of both going on at the same time, because this cannonball is falling on a two-dimensional path. Uh, ooh, by the way, what shape do you think this is? Starts with the P. Parabola, good call. And there's really no new variables and no new formulas. So it's the same five variables, right? Uh, four of these are vector quantities and time is the scalar quantity, right? That, right? And then, uh, it, hey, it's, it's the same three kinematic formulas that we've been using all along, right? But the difference is gonna be we're going to divvy this up and uh, analyze the motion strictly vertically versus strictly horizontally. Because as that cannonball follows this parabola path, does a little bit of both. Okay. So here's what we do. I'm going to walk you guys through how to solve uh, this setup. Uh, we'll, we'll do this, this pair of questions right here. Okay. What's the blast speed and what's the crash speed? Okay. Uh, and then hopefully uh, I'll be able to plant some ideas so that when we get more in depth with this next week, uh, you have to say, oh, yeah, okay, I've, I've seen that, like how to solve these. Right. I remember like, how, kind of how this works. Okay. So we're going to. Uh, 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 split those into strictly vertical motion and strictly horizontal motion. So the cannonball is going from point A to point B, right? Uh, now, guys, which way does gravity pull? Gravity only pulls which way? Down, which is vertical, right? Ah, so does gravity have anything to do with the horizontal motion of this ball? No, no nothing to do with horizontal, only everything to do with the vertical, right? Right? All right, so uh, is this ball accelerating down? Yeah, in fact, I think overall it's probably picking up speed, right? Going fast, 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 fast. Okay. But what about horizontally? For example, what if you were up here in a blimp, like a kilometer up, looking down on this whole thing, uh, watching this whole cannonball blast? Do you think it would look like the cannonball was going approximately constant speed across the field? It, it would, because you would just be detecting the horizontal component, uh, uh, component of motion. And gravity doesn't pull horizontally, so it's not going to speed up or slow down. And we've been ignoring air drag, and we're going to continue to do that. So there is no horizontal force. So it's going to go constant speed across the field, but it's going to be speeding up vertically because of gravity pulls down. Okay? So uh, here, here's one framework that could possibly help you solve these type problems. We're going to do vertical motion versus horizontal motion. And in the vertical direction, we've got our classic variables, time, acceleration, displacement, initial velocity, final velocity, a little wall right here. And then in the horizontal direction, look, guys, if there's no acceleration horizontally, which means acceleration is equal to zero, right? Do you guys remember how it simplifies these equations? Right, these bottom two, well, I don't say a whole lot, super interesting, but 
But this top one, does it just turn into x equals bt? Right? In fact, those are the only three variables we really care about. X, V, and T. Right? Will that be true? Get, get, get so far? Okay. Now, I'm, I'm going to go back and modify these a little bit. Because now that we have vertical and horizontal, well, this X and this X are talking about two totally different displacements, right? This is vertical displacement. This is horizontal displacement. So let, let me go back. Left to right. Let's modify. So time, that's fine. This acceleration. Well, if we're talking about projectiles, wouldn't the acceleration be due to gravity? And that's pretty well going to be true for projectiles. So maybe we can just call it A and G for gravity, right? This X is going to change to a Y, right? Just right over there. going to change it to a Y to represent vertical displacement. So X now is going to be horizontal displacement and Y is going to be vertical displacement. Or, or like on this picture, I did H for height, like a height change. That could also be this number, right? 45 meters. Okay. Right. And then I'm going to add to these subscripts. C, V naught. I'm going to do V naught in the Y direction and then V F in the Y direction. Okay. So I'm just looking strictly vertically, just strictly up and down. Right. Okay. And then over here with the horizontal motion, the only thing I'm going to change is I'm going to slap a subscript on this V and do V sub X to say, What's the speed in the horizontal direction? How fast is it going strictly horizontally? Which, if you're thinking ahead, is actually the answer to this question, right? What's the blast speed of the cannon? Because the cannon is blasting horizontally. Ah, you see whatever number this is, is going to be the answer? Is it? Just kind of thinking ahead a few steps here. Right? All right. And let's put down uh, on paper, what do we have? Well, I did explicitly give you two numbers. Uh, how about this 45 meters? Which, is, which of these variables does this 45 meters represent? How about the vertical displacement, right? Or, or going from point A to point B, isn't there a height change of 45 meters? So 45 meters goes right here. Okay. Oh, how about the 120 meters? Where does 120 meters go? X, yeah, 120 meters, okay. Uh, what other numbers do you know? Do you guys know this one? It'd probably be heavily implied you're on Earth, right? In fact, if you changed planets, the answer would probably change. Uh, it, it would. So let's go with 10 meters per second squared. Sometimes that's an implied number. It's implied that you're on Earth. Okay? So you know you're accelerating down 10 meters per second squared. Okay? Uh, now, just at a glance with what I've written so far, would anything be solvable so far? Could, could we pull, pull up an equation to solve anything yet? Not quite yet. Um, because how many variables do you need out of these five to solve anything? Three uh, versus, even if you just look at the horizontal stuff, if you have three variables to juggle, how many do you have to have to solve anything? Two, right? If I just tell you how far, it's like, well, how fast, how much time? Huh? Well, you gotta know one of those to figure out, right? Okay, so it's like, ah, well, maybe we don't have enough to solve this. Uh, but there is actually one more of these that you know. There's one more that you know. And just to move things along a bit, because it's a short day, because with this cannon, blast this cannonball strictly horizontally, when this cannonball is leaving the cannon, how fast is it moving up and down? Or, or is that kind of a weird trick question? How many guys say it's not moving up and down? It's It has zero component of vertical velocity leaving the cannon. Isn't that true? It's only going to the side. Now, if you wait a little interval of time, it starts to move downwards, but, but not leaving the cannon, right? Not leaving the cannon barrel. So, what does that tell you about initial velocity in the y direction? Zero meters per second. Ah, do you guys see at a glance now that there would be enough information to solve something now at this point? Okay. So this framework is not the only framework to solve projectiles, but um, I mean, it, it, it's one framework anyway. So it, at least it gives you a force for the trees point of view of what variables you have and what, what to work with. Okay. Hey, the fact that we have three things, it looks like we can solve something in the vertical direction. Do you guys think we could, I bet we could solve uh, either or both of these at this point, right? Uh, especially time. Do you think we could, at this point, solve how much time it, the cannonball takes to get from here to here? Right? W would that be the same? Would that be the same time as, what about this? Suppose at the same time you blast the cannonball, you take another cannonball that's uh, parked right at the edge and you just give it a little tap and just goes, you just fall straight down. Which cannonball do you think would reach the ground first? Or do you think they would tie? How many of you guys say they're going to tie? Yeah, they're going to tie because they have the exact same vertical motion because horizontal motion and vertical motion are completely independent of each other. Okay. Well, uh, except for this time, it takes the same time no matter how you analyze it. So we're, we're going to figure that out. Can I go 
uh, y equals v naught t, which is just going to be zero, plus one half g t squared, say called down positive. Uh, I know it has to fall 45 meters, and it's picking up a uh, speed at a rate of 10 meters per second per se passing second. If you do a little algebra, half 10 is 5, divided by 5, that's 9, square root. Wouldn't that be 3 seconds? Right? Th three seconds to crash, right? Which uh, I bet some of you guys already kind of figured that out even before I saw that. Because you might remember, remember if you just drop a ball straight down, how far is the fall in three seconds? Oh, hey, that's about 45 meters, right? And 45 meters uh, takes three seconds to fall that far, right? Starting from rest. And vertically, this is an identical scenario, right? Do you guys think that this three seconds right here? How long it takes to get from here to here vertically is the same time horizontally? Yes. This is the one variable you're sort of allowed to uh, transfer using the, this framework. So this is still three seconds from a horizontal point of view, right? No, that's the only variable you can do that with because all these other variables are vectors. So these four guys are strictly vertical. These two guys are strictly horizontal. But the time is the scalar value. So, okay, it's three seconds either way, right? Oh, uh, hey, if you know how far it went, 120 meters, that's its range, horizontal displacement, and you know how much time, can you guys solve how fast it was traveling across the field? Yeah. V sub x equals 120 meters in three seconds. Isn't that like 40 meters per second? Right? Wasn't it always traveling across the field at 40 meters per second? Guess how fast it was blasted from the cannon? 40 meters per second. Right? You guys can't get that? Okay. That's the answer to the first question. Last speed of cannon. So walk well, you guys see that one more time. We got vertical information, we got horizontal information. But it's the same variables and the same equations we've been using the last couple of weeks. Okay. Uh, we were able to use the, the vertical information. There was enough information we could figure out the time of fall. And then if you know how much time it was in the air for, and you know how far it went horizontally, you just divide those two and get the horizontal speed, which is the same thing as the blast speed. Uh, follow-up question, what's the crash speed of the cannon? So if you use another kinematic equation, you guys fall for three seconds, how fast is it picked up to? 10, 20, 30 meters per second? You guys remember GT? So this is going to come up to 30 meters per second. I'm keeping a good pace here because uh, I'm trying to fit in a half-hour class today. Right? So would it be true this is picked up to 30 meters per second vertical? Right? So we're, we're trying to figure out the, the second question, what's the crash speed? So isn't the ball going across and down at the same time? Right up here. So you guys know it's going across at 40 meters per second. It's now picked up to 30 meters per second vertical. Can you guys do some Pythagorean theorem? Is this a three, four, or five right triangle? Is it crashing at 50 meters per second? Because of Pythagorean theorem, right? Okay. You guys get that? Are we good? All right. So I, I know we through, went through that one a, a, a little bit fast, but um, hopefully you guys get the, the big picture concept of how that works. And then next week, we're going to be doing uh, more of that type stuff. All right, but uh, uh, any questions so far? All right, but let's, let's close it out this week with uh, some uh, linear motion review. So we're taking a step back uh, and let's, let's do some activity that involves roller coasters. Okay. So suppose you were on a roller coaster and you have a pretty steep drop. So here's here's the coaster up here. Everybody's in here, having a good time, about to about go for the crash. Okay. Uh, and you're wondering, huh, I wonder how tall this roller coaster drop is. Oh, do you guys got your uh, you have your cell phones with you? Uh, guys, guys, pull out your cell phones. Right, pull the stopwatch function. You guys got a stopwatch function on your cell phone? Right. Do you think if you timed how much time it took to get from here to down here, you could figure out that that height, that drop right there, that vertical displacement? All right, we're gonna switch over to the video. We're gonna go on a roller coaster ride. Roller coaster time. <laughs> So you flip my screen here. Uh, okay, wait, you guys aren't ready for that yet. There we go. All right, so you're just waiting for the drop part, right? Just the vertical drop. All right, you guys got your stopwatches ready?
That was probably a good practice run. Uh, uh, we'll do a couple more times. All right, so here, here we go. Right. Here, just looking for the drop part, just the drop. Uh, what drop times did you guys get? Did they get a good drop time? Uh, what what'd you get? Ooh, okay, that, that's that's not too far off. That's kind of good. Uh, what'd you get? So it sounds a little closer, a little bit, a bit closer. Uh, anybody else get time? Mm -hmm. Let's do one more. We'll do, we'll do one more run, and we'll, we'll come up with the drop height. All right, so let's go, let's go. Uh, the, the closest time I got so far sounds like 4.23. 4 sounds the closest to what I got on my paper. I know the answer. So. Ah, what'd you guys get? 4.35 this time. Huh. It, it may get 4.16. Uh, sounds, sounds a bit closer. I think it's the most accurate one we got so far. All right, 4.16. Anybody else got any other numbers? Uh, let's try it with that. All right. So if you got a fall time of, let's use that, 4.16 seconds. Okay. Right. Oh, how are you going to figure out the height? What, what equation should I write right here? Height equals what? You guys could come up with that, right? Come up with that. So you're going to feed in about 10 meters per second squared. You can say 9.8 if you like. It doesn't really change the answer a whole lot, but use for gravity. 0.16 seconds being squared. So we're going to get from that. Looking at about 86, 87 meters. Okay. Uh, now, if I'm going by my notes here, the ideal time, according to my notes, would have been 3.8 seconds. Go up to 3.8, right, which would have given you a height of 72 meters, which is the, the, the textbook value. Uh, for uh, that height drop for that roller coaster. All right, yeah, so you guys get about 86. Uh, textbook value is about 72. Yeah, pretty close, pretty close. Pretty good right there. Okay. Oh, ooh, you guys want to do the tallest roller coaster in the world? Tallest roller coaster in the world. Screen flip here. Tallest roller coaster in the world. Let's try one of these again, except bigger. Five, four, three, two, one, go. See so what we did before. Please, that is the trial run. All right, so take two. Here we go. Uh, what number did you guys get there? You got a number. Um, 4.26. 4.26. All right. That's pretty close. Uh, what else did you guys get? 6.86. 6.86. Ooh, it's, it's actually between those two. 4.33. 4.33. Uh, okay, that's uh, that's pretty close. It's, it's, it's somewhere in there. It's, it's kind of between the, those three numbers. Oh yeah, what's it? I got five. Ooh, ooh, that's really close. I might use that as the as a model if you guys don't get any better. Anybody on that? All right, let's see one more run. All right, then let's see, put put the screen back over here. All right, what'd you guys get from that? 
Uh, uh, what was your number, Jonathan? Five point what? Five point one. Five point one two seconds. Um, uh, that that's that's really close to. Hey, do you best get another number? Um, yeah. mine was I got a little late, but I realized it was about five point eight. Ooh, about about five point eight. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. So somewhere there, right? Uh, let's start with this one. Can you guys tell me what the height is based on that time? And so I just did one for you guys a moment ago. So see if you guys can figure that one out. Who's getting the height for this? Who's gonna get it? 131. Ah, all right. Alex has got it. 131 meters. Oh, I thought it'd be slightly different. They had a bit of speed on the snow. Oh, yeah, that, that's a good point, too. It didn't start exactly from us. Yeah, that's a good thing to notice. So we are making a few um, uh, simplifications, right? We're ignoring air drag like we normally do. Maybe it wasn't exactly vertical, but we're saying it's extremely close. Maybe they didn't start exactly from rest, but we're saying V naught is really close to zero meters per second. Yeah, those are good th things to think about. So we are going to find a little bit here. Good call. So 10 meters per second squared, 5.12 seconds. Yeah, uh, she got in 131 meters. And the textbook height, I'll say H textbook. Well, not really textbooks, really from the internet where everything is true, is 139 meters. Yeah, wow, you guys got really close. All right, good good deal there. Uh, let's do, all right, got another one line for you guys. Let's switch back here. Oh, uh, do you guys want to see that roller coaster fail? Let's see a fail coaster. Just for fun. What happens when things go wrong? Oh. Ah, sweet dreams. Right. How many guys uh, ever seen one of these going down the highway? You guys seen one of these? Right. This attenuator? Got another, another picture. Oh, actually, actually, maybe, maybe I like that picture. I've been doing this one all day. But this one, you can kind of see the structure there. Right? Uh, any kind of side by side? Well, we got two slightly different pictures. That's all right, right? All right, so what what's that for? What's the purpose of this thing? To stop your call without utterly annihilating it. Ooh, all right. I, I like that. I like Kim's explanation. Stop your car without utterly annihilating it. Yeah. So, uh, do, do you guys know? Uh, um, do you guys know how many people uh, die in car crashes just in the United States every year? No. Uh, ooh. Uh, good guess. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe, maybe you would. Let's go with the. Uh, let's go. Forty thousand. That number's been pretty consistent for for a few decades now. About forty thousand consistently every year. Uh, one of the more underappreciated statistics about road traffic. So. Um, suppose you're driving on interstate highway about 70 miles an hour and who knows maybe the traffic's bad or you're distracted or this or that or you're tired and one reason or another you drift off the road a little bit and bam slam to this concrete barrier right here is it gonna be a bad day for you might be the last day for you but if you throw in this attenuator again i, I like uh, i like caleb's explanation i might uh change the change the physics of um that car crash maybe car crash not Car's not going to be completely annihilated, right? Because let's let's think about the physics variables that would change, and we, we have future uh, physics that we could uh, contextualize uh, this in in terms of like forces and uh, energy and blah, blah blah. But let's just go with the, those three kinematic formulas. Think about changes. So uh, here, let me, let me flip flip my screen over, and we'll run a checklist here. So would the let's start with these guys. What's your final velocity for a car crash? Zero. And that's the same regardless of whether you slam the concrete or you hit the attenuator. It's going to be zero either way, right? What's this represent in that story? Initial velocity, like how fast you're driving? Maybe about 70 miles an hour if you're, if you're on I-95. Right. And in metric units, that's really close to 30 meters per second. So when I run the numbers, I'm going to put 30 
for 30 meters per second, because that's about the same speed. Okay. So you went from 30 to zero, right? Uh, now, which of these variables in a car do you feel? Which, which, which one is the one you feel? Acceleration. Acceleration, right? Because you can't feel speeds. Like right now, we're on the spinning earth. We're going about 1,000 miles an hour. Uh, but don't feel that, right? But you feel acceleration. Ah, see, so ooh, does that have something to do with like the, the rate that you slow down? Right? Now, the other things that would change, so, so maybe that's what we want to solve for. Maybe the, if we solve for acceleration, that could tell us something about how bad the, the wreck was, right? right. Um, and the other things that do change are both time and distance of the crash. Now, time I'm going to avoid because it's a fraction of a second. Either way, it's kind of hard to parse out. But the displacement of crashing, I bet we can get a pretty good estimate of what it is in either scenario, either concrete wall or attenuator. Right? So here's here's one meter stick, right? One meter stick. Right. Um, so for your car to go from full full uh, full highway speed to zero, about how many of these? About how many meter sticks do you think? Maybe maybe, maybe like one or two. Do you guys think about one or two? Right. And it probably depends on your car too. Like if your car was manufactured to be like, like super stiff, or like, uh, or if your car is like, um, you, you want your car to crumple, but like at a consistent rate where it slows down evenly, right? That probably gives you the, the least acceleration, therefore the, the safest crash, right? Uh, what, what do you guys feel like? Do you guys want one meter or two meters? Two? Uh, all right, let's do two. All right, so uh, yeah, probably, yeah, it depends on the car, right? I'm going to go with just to kind of move things along here. Uh, because yeah, got it. All right, let's let's pick this guy. Let's go with the third kinematic equation because these these are locked in place regardless of what you're crashing against. Right, we want to solve for a and we could get a pretty good estimate on x, and uh, we're going to go with two meters. So let's do that. Let's go final velocity of zero squared equals driving speed squared plus two a. We want to solve for that to figure out how bad the crash is times the crash distance of about two meters, right? So that's it. So zero squared equals, uh, I'm gonna go 30 meters per second, about highway speed, two meters, okay? 30 squared, is that 900? Subtract that over, divide by four, See what that is. All right, so the magnitude is 225 meters per second squared. And negative just means like you're slowing down, right? So maybe we should say the steps value. Okay, so 225 meters per second squared. All right. Okay, great. That's a big number. What does that really mean? What's some context for that? Hey, 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 I bet you guys do know an acceleration context. What's the acceleration of this? Uh let's got flip my screen over. I didn't know that didn't happen. Okay. What, what's the acceleration in this room? 10 meters per second squared, right? Are we at all right now in one Earth gravity, one G? Mm -hmm. We are. So you guys remember a railroad track dimensional analysis? I want to see how many Gs is this? I know every 10 meters per second squared is one Earth G. Would that be true? Right. So, ah, you guys see that? About 22 Gs. Okay. First, we were estimating some of these numbers. I mean, these numbers could change a little bit, but it, it's up in the, like the 20s, like 20 Gs. Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, I wonder what, what if we run into that attenuator though? What changes in this equation by having that attenuator there? Not that. Not that. Ah, how about that X? Uh, let's get an estimate. How how long do you think that attenuator was? How many meter sticks? Um, one. We say well, it's probably uh well you you're you're like about almost two meters big tall. Uh, I'm gonna do what, what I've been doing uh all day. Let, let, let's take that to about um. Let, let's say six. Just, just to have a number. So we're gonna triple. I'm gonna triple this uh, this distance to six meters. All right. Let's try this again. Let's go. Final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two ax. Yeah. Right. So 
but I'm going to pop in six meters. Okay. So you guys see I tripled the distance from two to six? Okay. Right. What's that going to do to acceleration? 900 negative 12 divide. All right, so we're looking at about 75 meters per second squared, which if you run the dimensional analysis, how many Gs, right? How many Gs is that? About 7.5. There you go. I'll let about seven Gs. Ah, do you guys see that by here, here's what it was before with the concrete, like 20 something Gs. Here it is with the attenuator, about seven Gs. Do you guys see that by tripling the distance of the crash, you get one third of the acceleration? Ah, that, that, that sounds a lot safer, doesn't it? Hmm. Now, I wonder what, what, what's all this G force? What does that really look like? So I flip back over. Let's take a look at this. Share screen two. We got. Yeah, we got we got time here. Cool. Ready. Oh, oops. I need to give you guys some context here. You guys see this uh, centrifuge? So this is for astronaut training. Uh, astronauts, by the way, get up to about six Gs as they're rocketing upward. Right, about six Gs. Could you guys imagine if you're sitting in one of those boxes? Um, no, if you're just kind of sitting still, do you think you would even feel the rotation? Uh, probably not. Yeah, maybe if you're like walking around a bit. But you would mostly feel what? You would feel like you were thrown back. That, that's what it would feel like in there. Almost, hey, almost like you were in a car, like slamming on the gas pump, right? accelerating forward. That's what it would feel like inside one of those boxes, right? Let's go inside one of those. Cool. It's ready. I'm ready. Hey, cool. Guess he's at 1G right now, right? He's just sitting at rest. You're, you're in 1G. He's in 1G. Not for long. Nine G's, nine G's. Look at that. Are you there? How you doing? How you doing? You know what happened? Um, G lock. G lock. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I guess for science, if it helps you <laughs> have to learn. Uh, let's really learn about G. So you got up to nine G's, right? Oh, oh, is my computer frozen? It is. All right. Well. I guess that's my background now. Ah. We will be having a tech round seven straight. Students who are asking for you to first report to your seventh period after the bell rings, your teachers will take a tip and then they'll bring you down to the tech round. So please make sure when the bell rings, you report to your seventh period first. Teachers will take attendance and then they down to the cash. Or denying you all. All right, so uh, my computer's frozen up, but uh, I, you know what? I, I think it's a good PowerPoint anyway. So that is a wrap on the week. All right, end this video here. Anybody have any questions about anything? All right, you guys have a great Labor Day weekend and bring me your take home quiz on Tuesday.